Welcome back friends. Carrying forward with the discussion we were having on different elements of marketing mix in consonance with product and brand management, especially product management. This session is related to distribution and promotion, the two important P's. I have talked about the relationship element earlier as well, but this is slightly more descriptive and uh, I have been suggesting in all my sessions, uh, especially you know uh, last 4 or 5 sessions when I covered up strategy. So, after that I have been suggesting that these elements have to be looked upon with a strategic orientation, implementation perspective, usage perspective, creativity perspective, how to use all these P's and the aspects related to these P's to further take up the product through its life cycle. That means to grow, to earn larger profits around the product. So, let us see what distribution does for us. You see a channel of distribution comprises a set of institutions which perform all of the activities utilized to move a product and its title from production to consumption. References given there Buckland theory of distribution channel structure 1966. Another element given by Professor Kotler is a marketing channel is a set of interdependent organizations mark these words that help make a product or service available for use or consumption by the consumer or business user. The purpose is explicit, the definitional frame gives us the logic, the association, the interdependency and the purpose. Now, basic channel decisions can be categorized. For example, do we use direct or indirect channels or should we be using direct or indirect channels and we would realize you know what, what direct or indirect channels are. Direct channels are primarily when you try to reach to the consumer directly and then indirect are wherein there are intermediaries. So, we all understand that we purchase many things from retailers. Now, single or multiple channels, what should be the cumulative length of multiple channels? How many intermediaries? It definitely depends upon the type of goods, the geography we want to reach and several other factors, but then we have to take a call. Can we integrate in a fashion wherein we become our own distributors? That can also be an important call which a company can take a product manager can think of depending upon what kind of an orientation he wants to keep up in terms of the connectivity with the customer and the dependency on the channel and we will be talking about this. Then there are several types of intermediaries, wholesalers, agents, brokers, retailers and then you know intra-channel conflict perspective has also to be monitored because when you have larger number of channels, so then everyone is working in their own interest because there are different uh, you know organizations actually institutions for that matter we have seen that in definition and they will be working for their own profitability so they would try to think in those terms though they are uh, they are your partners so that has to be managed that has to be seen you see there are elements of channel management decisions definitely as in earlier cases we start with objectives and channel objectives can be to determine what the company is trying to achieve, meeting the needs and the wants of the target market and to give their product a competitive edge. Many a times you want to reach the market so efficiently that the customer gets attracted towards your channel because your channel is efficient, it is quick, it is coherent with whatever you are doing and they are prominent on their locations. So, that can also be you know a strategic perspective plus they have the capability and capacity to maintain the 
level of freshness for example, if you are talking of food product or to strengthen the serviceability of the products if they are larger products requiring services after sales and so on. And motivation and evaluation apart from management and selection of channel members is a very important element. You would have seen advertisements related to you know for example, a company is seeking channel partners and then they have reference to their website uh, find a column which says that for prospective partners just click that they will start giving you the clues on what kind of a capability you must have what kind of a commitment you must have. They would ask you to describe yourself as an organization, as an individual with your vision, with your marketing skills, with your investments, uh, investment capabilities and so on. And there they would like to know your motivation and prospective commitment. So, this exercise can be easily done. Uh, you, can, you can think of doing that and that will enable you to understand what kind of a motivation and coherence they are seeking, how one can you know think of becoming a partner to a large organization. It is like getting a job while justifying that I will be coherent with the vision of this organization. How do we decide upon a distributor? You know market segment, the distributor must be familiar with the target consumer of the company. Changes during the product life cycle that is different channels can be you know used at different points in the product life cycle. Then producer distributor fit, is there a match between their policies, strategies, image and the company you know, synergy, I have just mentioned about that. Qualification assessment, establishing the experience and track record of the intermediary not only in terms of the capability, but in terms of the financial transparency which they have been following. How much training and support will the distributor requires? You see the point here is that your channel partner if knows the business, knows the trade, knows the customer then it is much easier for you. If they require you know extreme developmental support then it will uh, you know change the concentration of the people who are engaged for product and brand management on the field for example, product managers or channel managers for that matter. So, channel management you know uh, is this another section within an organization and large organizations they have separate channel managers supporting the product management team. Then distribution decisions are also associated with multiple channels, control versus costs, intensity of distribution desired, involvement in e-commerce. And looking at multiple channels, some products meet the needs of both industrial and consumer markets. For example, fans for household and industrial purposes as well. J and J snack foods sell its pretzels, drinks, and cookies using multiple channels to supermarkets, movie theaters, stadiums, schools, hospitals, and so on. So, so you have to focus. The larger the number of channels, the larger is the reach, but difficult is the management and prob high probability of intra-channel conflict is there. Basic reason might be that one channel partner may complain that you have given larger number of items to a particular channel partner which may be seen as a competitor by the you know former channel partner and so on. Control versus costs. All manufacturers and producers must weigh the control they want to keep over the distribution of their products against the costs and profitability. Direct sales force wherein company employees are expensive with payroll, benefits, expenses may set sales quotas and easily monitor performance and so on. Agents work independently running their own businesses less expensive require less control or you know may generate lesser control. Agents sell product lines that make them more money they are interested in that. So, you one has to look for the trade off basically, you have to have your employees many a times, you cannot go just for the agency based kind of a business or bringing on agents 
and many a times that would be a profitable element for you if you have committed agents. One of my favorite examples have always been LIC, their agents are committed, their team is committed. You might not be able to differentiate, you know, if they are employees or just the agents. So that is the level of commitment if, uh, you know, if, if it comes to you, then definitely it is a profitable level, otherwise you have to go for a sales force which definitely requires the norms, the level of salary which your organization should offer, the law of the land also guides you on that and so many things. Management's desire for control of distribution is also a, an important element as I told you. In general, the shorter the channel structure, the higher the degree of control and vice versa and the lower the intensity of distribution, the higher the degree of control and vice versa. Distribution intensity, you know, how widely a product will be distributed? Marketers want to achieve the ideal market exposure determining distribution patterns. Ideal market exposure make their product available without overexposing and losing money. To achieve market exposure, marketers must determine distribution intensity and so on. So, you see, it is a dream for every marketer to reach to all the customers which may use his product. Product manager's dream is that he keeps on asking the production manager to keep on enhancing the production. That is, that is what, what one dreams of. So, intensity is, is a reflection of that. Then, you see, there is channel intensity at intermediaries at each level of marketing channel, exclusive distribution, selective distribution, intensive distribution. For example, intensive distribution mainly means distribution on a large scale and displaying the product in as many ways and places as possible so that the customer sells in high volume due to large scale distribution, FMCG products, consumer durables and many other forms of such products. Exclusivity wherein you have specific channel partners because the product requires so, probably because of the kind of positioning of the product, the premium levels which you would be charging, the kind of customers you may think that would come in a certain uh, you know ambience only. So, there are several kinds of considerations and examples may be varied, but just to quote Rolex, Lamborghini, Mercedes, BMW and many others, many others. There are some, you know, hair salon which are specifically in, uh, you know, located in uh, specific, you know, cities with, with specific locational aspect and so on. So, so you see depends upon, you know, how uh, the, the uh, product requires uh, uh, about uh, you know the channel to be. So, and same is the logic with as far as selective distribution goes. For example, Armani, Gucci, you know they sell their clothing only through top departmental stores, high end departmental stores wherein you know they focus on a very specific buyers paying capacity or paying desire should I say. Dual distribution is also there. A system of marketing channel organization in which a manufacturer uses two approaches simultaneously to get products to the end users. Commonly, one approach is, is to use marketing intermediaries while the other is to sell direct to the end users and there are many, many organizations which have been doing that. Dell has done that, Lenovo has done that and you know several others have been doing that. Then the last element involvement in e-commerce, you know it means by which products are sold to customers and industrial buyers through the internet and consumers have also become accustomed to buying products online. So, you know this, so what level you would be utilizing as far as the e-commerce perspective goes and it is a huge debate in industry at this moment especially for product managers who are thinking in terms of, you know creating a composition of channels vis-a-vis e-commerce -vis e options. So, because e-commerce though it is through a platform, through an organization, through an aggregator, through a marketplace, 
but definitely is you know like direct interaction. So, it has different kinds of advantages, different kinds of disadvantages also and then direct and personal connect many a times is not there, but definitely depends upon the kind of the product which. So, aapki apni dukan Amazon you go there and you will realize that which companies are focusing more on as far as e-commerce goes. Many companies they have reduced uh, physical channels to an extent while utilizing you know the other day uh, I was uh, sitting with uh, an informed group of uh, you know, marketing scholars and someone remarked that Amazon and all these kinds of organizations they are changing the shopping culture. Now, that is a big term I would not be going into those kind of details, but that that definitely is there. So, now you see then there are dimensions of channel design length of channel that is number of levels in a distribution channel intensity of various levels types of intermediaries involved that is agents, wholesalers, distributors and retailers and so on. And there are some determinants of channel structure as well. The distribution tasks that need to be performed for example, packaging, storage, delivery, marketing and so on. So, definitely if you require the product to be sold somewhere while being stored before being sold. So, definitely you require that kind of a space and your channel partner must have that space. So, you see it depends upon for example, if you require that there is a cold chain that should be uh, associated with the product distribution. So, you require the that kind of a capability as far as your channel partners go and so on. The economics of performing distribution tasks, management's desire for control of distribution and transaction efficiency. There are some important channel arrangements and the related decisions. For example, you know in terms of inventory who holds it, who pays for it. In terms of service who does what repair, replacement, training and several other elements. For example, there were uh, you know uh, uh, organizations or some organizations of contemporary times they had their distribution partners who were also the service partners. Now, in today's era if you purchase an air conditioner uh, and, and you, uh, you know you call your reseller or, or retailer for that matter and then talks to uh, you know you talk to him about uh, let us say some service support. So, he would give you a, a call center number wherein you have to call and register your complaint. Now, that will be transferred to a local service partner. Service partners and retail partners now are entirely different. They are two different kinds of you know trading arrangements probably franchise if you can say that. So, so you see that differentiation has come up because of these kind of elements wherein you know quality of service has become a very specific aspect to be monitored and to be pursued differently through different kinds of expert organizations that is your service channel partners. Delivery, the time frame, minimum order size, customization, price you know basic price, discount schedule and so on. Then there are aspects of returns and allowances support level wherein sales effort, advertising, display prominence and stock capacity those things are there. Then exclusivity factor is also there and then one financial or several financial considerations are there, but one prominent financial consideration which is actually a mainstay in discussions between the organization and the channel partners is credit terms of credit. So, what kind of you know arrangement for example, for producer and marketer the best channel partner is he or she who pays you know the organization which pays in advance for that matter or let us say in cash, but that usually does not happen. The channel partner wants a guarantee wants a term related to you know 
you know a credit period basically so that they dissolve their inventory they earn uh, their own profits they manage manage their expenses and then they give you you know your money so so that is uh, how the negotiations go on and both of them they meet somewhere in between now i will be taking you towards the aspects of product promotion what is promotion it is an element in an organization's marketing mix that serves to inform persuade and remind the market about the organization and or its products just to remind you i have a course on integrated marketing communication on same platform nptel you can attend that full course it's a 30 hours course basically so and there you will find extensive details on this element which i am going to uh, demonstrate in front of you in next 10 minutes so you see there are two larger promotion methods one is product promotion the other is institutional promotion or we can we can uh, you know many a times we uh, look at it with industrial promotion perspective also but but largely you know as per the reference we are using here uh it it is bifurcated this way so product promotion is a method used by businesses to convince prospects to select their goods or services instead of a competitor's brand and institutional promotion is used to create a favorable image for a business help it advocate for change or take a stand or trade or community issues and you know so so larger that is an image related perspective and pursuing the trade itself and here the product focused promotion there is a promotion mix wherein there is an element of personal selling advertising direct marketing sales promotion public relations and several others social media marketing and and uh, you know uh, uh, all possible elements which we can include here here one important thing which one must remember is that the most important aspect for a product manager is that whichever combination the communication manager uses the product should you know stabilize with the positioning perspective in the minds of the target customer that means positioning should get materialized communication should justify the positioning so whichever way you go for that here product manager plays a very important role and that is he and his team she and her team guides the communication team about how positioning should be done they are part of the creative aspect of the campaign or the communication itself and then the communication management team they go for media choices and bring in coherence in media choices which is a very specific art and lots of quantitative analysis is required in that kind of you know decision making so you see promotional mix is largely defined as a cost effective combination of advertising selling sales promotion direct marketing and public relations strategies used to reach company goals how much of the sales force how much of the advertising or direct marketing effort must be employed and engaged and within media channels what kind of media channels how much of tv what kind of you know space in the newspaper and magazines and so on so that is how promotional mix works but the point is it should be in coherence with our product if it is an automotive launch then it has to be like you know supporting that launch purpose if it is propelling a product from one stage to the other like fevicol uh predominantly you know reference based kind of a selling was used in wherein someone used to suggest that fevicol must be used in this kind of a composition while painting the walls or construction in whichever way and then fevicol became a household product 
wherein product manager visualized its forms and communication team actually materialized that perspective in the term uh, in, in the form of the communication they developed for fevicol fevicol ka jod kabhi tutne na paaye so that is the perspective you know and and that is how the right form of promotion is chosen and it actually is supposed to reach the target market effectively and it also as i said is related to nature of the product there are many elements which promotion entails one is related to push versus pull strategy push strategy is related to the aspects such as wherein producer creates demand for the product aims promotional activity to the channel members each channel member promotes to the next channel member and demand you know is pushed down through and through the distribution channels and consumer is attracted by the farthest end of the distribution chain largely retailers to purchase the products because again it depends upon the kind of product strategy engaged for example again an insurance product can be a good example a credit card sales can be a good example and several other such kinds of products you can think of consumer products as well and, and there are many successful organizations uh, wherein they have marketed their consumer products through a chained kind of a distribution system wherein their buyer becomes their distributor as well then there is you know pull strategy wherein producer creates the demand for the product aims promotional activity directly at the consumer consumer demands the product from the retailer and demand is pulled up the distribution channel and this structure in front of you is quite explicit in terms of push strategy and pull strategy the objective is very clear flow of the goods to the customer along with a logical flow of communication mutually intertwined with each other communication should support the product management exercise that is the objective basically and it should also strengthen the positioning perspective of the product it should enable the product in in all its life cycle stages it should support the product so much that product probably doesn't comes out of the growth stage for a long long time we have seen such products you see live boy hai jahan tandurusti hai wahan one kind of a campaign long sales of the product extreme coherence and utterly butterly delicious is one of my favorites so you see that is how communication is so important when we talk of product management i'll rest the case here in terms of promotion i'll be coming back to you with lots of discussion on design design thinking especially design thinking and with a perspective of design thinking related to being a strategy because remember we are pursuing every discussion now in you know uh, now onwards with a strategic perspective that is implementation and execution perspective so i'll be coming with design thinking later on innovation and at last new product development before i start discussing brand management keep the pace with the discussions which we are having keep imagining keep you know developing an art of 
interpretation and interconnectedness developing interconnections between all the elements which we have discussed. I will be coming back to you soon. Till then, goodbye.